Today's video is all about the best way to keep wounds clean in dogs and cats. And next up we have a question from Just Me who asks, can I use hydrogen peroxide on wounds? Um, so salt and water or vinegar and water to clean it, what should I be using? Or should I just be using water and soap? Um, they're asking because these products are antibacterial and they're more natural antiseptics, are they not? So what can we use to clean wounds is the bottom line of what this question's asking. So let's think about what we want to be doing when we're cleaning wounds. What are our aims? So there really are two aims. And the first is to remove any contamination. Um, so that's dirt and bacteria. Um, and then the second is actually not to damage healthy healing tissue. And that's very important because healing tissue is actually um, quite delicate and can be susceptible to damage, which can delay healing and causes problems. Now, if we've got deep wounds, if there are large wounds, if they're bleeding or if they're painful then they should definitely be assessed by a vet because they may need additional treatment than just cleaning. So that could be antibiotics, it could be painkillers, um, it could even be um, surgery to, to suture to repair the wounds to stitch them up. But I'll start off if we've got a kind of a more minor wound that doesn't need veterinary intervention then there's a kind of a saying that we have, and that is the solution to pollution is dilution. And what that really means is that if something is contaminated, um, so with bugs, with dirt, then we want to just dilute that as much as possible. So we want to be rinsing that with lots and lots of water. Now it's been shown in a number of studies that drinkable tap water is absolutely fine to wash wounds with. And it's been shown to be as good as saline, which is effectively salty water. So you wanna be getting just a lot of water over that wound to flush it as clean as possible. Now for really dirty wounds, you can add just a mild soap and that can help just get rid of that initial contamination. So that's kind of the first step. Now, if the wound is very dirty or it's felt that there is a high risk of superficial infection, then that's when we want to be adding an antiseptic agent to help after that initial cleaning. So if we've got a wound that's actually just a little bit, you know, was a little bit dirty, that's all been cleaned away in that first rinse. Um, it's, you know, it's pretty superficial. We actually don't need to do anything other than clean it with that water. But yeah, if it was really dirty, if there's felt to be a high risk of infection, then that's when we want to be adding these antiseptic agents. So really the first part of the question was, can we use hydrogen peroxide or not? peroxide and I say no we really want to be avoiding hydrogen peroxide to clean wounds because while it does kill bacteria it's also been shown to slow healing and that's because hydrogen peroxide is actually quite damaging to to healthy tissue or it can be if we're using it in a really kind of dilute concentration then it may be okay but you know there's no need to use it and I think we've got better things that we can use and those in my mind would be um, something called either chlorhexidine or povidine iodine so those are two antiseptic agents that as long as we're using them again dilutely enough then they have good antibacterial antiseptic action um, and they're not going to damage healthy tissue so the thing, the, the, the thing that we need to concentrate is on is their concentration. So if you're buying these, then they come in two different forms. One is kind of a, a hand rub, a, a, a kind of a surgical scrub effectively, um, and they are much more concentrated, but we want the lower concentration. So with chlorhexidine, for example, we want something that's 0 0.02 to 0.05%, and whichever product you buy will have the concentration written on it. Um, we also, if we're using these, we shouldn't be using them for longer than a few days. If we're needing to use them for longer than a few days um, because the discharge is still there, because they're still looking puffy and inflamed, then it's likely the infection is deeper and they will need additional treatment. So if, you're use, if you've got concerns after a couple of days that things don't seem to be healing really nicely, then again, definitely check in with your vet and see if the wound needs anything else. There are other things that we can use. So sulfur sulfadiazine is something that we can add to wounds. Um, Manuka honey is another thing that we can add to wounds. And that really, we're adding those to prevent infections from becoming an issue. So if we've got an open wound, we don't want it to become infected because of bugs that are kind of in the environment and are coming into contact with the wound after it's been created. Um, so those are a couple of things to, that, that we can add that are antibacterial, antiseptic agents without being antibiotics. In my mind, for the majority of cases, we really want to be trying to avoid using antibiotic cream as a means of preventing treatment. And the big reason for that is that antibiotic misuse is causing a lot of resistance. And while smearing a little bit of antibiotic cream on a wound is unlikely to cause any big kind of super bug to develop, it's all part and parcel of 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 yeah, the global kind of misuse, if you like, of antibiotics. You know, we're using them 
a lot more than we necessarily need to and that's causing a whole load of problems and ultimately we're getting super bugs and people are dying as a result of that so you know if we've got other options to using antibiotics we really should be making best use of them okay so i hope that gives you a few useful tips should your dog or cat get uh, a superficial wound you know go through a few things to to clean it up use that tap water to start with just use a lot really really wash it wash it flush it an awful lot and then if things are severely contaminated we can think of using something like chlorhexidine and then if we're wanting to protect that wound and try and prevent infection we can use things such as silver sulfadiazine and manuka honey you've been watching the dr alex answers video podcast remember to subscribe and head over to dr for any links downloads and get your question answered